Right guys, welcome to Talkie Golf Club. We are on the short game area of myself, Dan Hendrickson and Will Farley. This is part two of a series of four that we're going to be doing for you. And today we're going to look at the basic chip shots around the green. And I've brought Will with me. Will is my trainee here at the golf club. He's going to help me with a few of the shots that he does differently maybe to what I do. And hopefully that might help your game when it comes to the short game. Let's hit some shots for you. Right, so the basic chip and run to get us going with. Now, there's lots of different clubs that you can use and obviously you're gonna get different types of distances, but for this particular shot, we're gonna go for a kind of a, quite a long shot. It's kind of like lots of green between us and where the flag is gonna be situated. So we're just gonna show you a couple of different ways and maybe a couple of different clubs that we use to try and play this shot. So when I'm practicing my chipping, I'm working on what I call a percentage. So when I get to a different golf course, because obviously I don't get to play the same course all the time, we generally move around golf courses when we play play obviously you're getting such different positions so what I mean by that is that the greens are going to be so different on different courses that we go and play and that means how firm they are the speed of what they're going to be and what I use is a percentage so I try and focus on a landing point and then how much it's going to roll out from there and this is what I will do before I try and play the golf course so I'm trying to figure out what my percentage is going to be based on that particular day for those greens so what I will do in this particular shot I'm heading up to the red flag at the top there and I've obviously got lots of green to work with and lots of slope to work all the way up to that pin what I'm going to try and do is pick a spot of where I want it to land and then work it out and calculate how much I'm going to run from there depending on the club that I use so for this particular shot I've got so much green to work with it's all uphill it's winter time so I've got a five iron now not many people are going to chip with a five iron but it's something that I practice and it's something that I use on a regular basis when I get onto golf courses maybe a Lynx course something like that where I need a lot of green between sort of me and where the pin is let me just show you what I'm going to do so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick a spot which is about 10 percent of the actual overall shot I'm going to land it in that point so I'm going to put a tee in the ground and then I'm going to use that as my focus point of where I want it to land because I've done my calculation of how much it's going to run up the green from here. And remember, I'm only putting a tee in the ground when I'm practicing. I'm not doing this when I get onto the golf course, but what I'm doing is I'm giving myself a good focal point. And you can see there with that shot that I literally nearly took the tee out of the ground. Now, the ball's come up fractionally short because as it's bounced it's got a bit stuck on the hill as it worked its way up. To be honest with you, I've executed the shot exactly how I wanted to do it. Now this position of landing can change depending on the, obviously the distance that I've got and the club that I'm using. So what you need to figure out is how far each club lands and then what it's going to do when it rolls out on the green. So Will, you're slightly different to that aren't you? Definitely. You yeah. don't use five irons and no, things like that? I'm more nine iron and wedges when I chip. Okay, so you'll generally max out at a nine iron? Nine you? iron. And then how are you practicing? What are you trying to do when you're so, sort of working on this? I'm more feel, so okay. I, I walk up, have a look, have a feel of the, the green, how, yeah. how firm the green is, and okay. I'll feel the shot from that. Right, so you're not, are you picking a landing spot when you're hitting? More of a landing zone, I'd say, so okay. there's obviously a percentage, yeah, definitely, yeah. but not a spot. So you're getting a gauge of how far up you want to throw yeah. it to then sort of see how it's going to release definitely, out from yeah. there. Okay, and for this particular shot now, that's the same shot as what I just had, what are you So using? I've picked a 9 iron. Okay, so you've maxed out now, you're getting to a position yeah. where you're moving into a 9 iron, which is your... Definitely, yeah. Sort of most de lofted club you're going to use for doing any chip. I uh, manipulate the, the loft as well, so okay. I have my hands further forward depending on how I feel on the shot. What Will's saying there is by taking loft off, he's actually moving his club around to what would be then a, an 8 iron, a 7 iron, and then a 6 iron. He's going to start to maneuver the loft based on the club that he's got. The difficulty with that, and this is fine for someone like Will who practices a lot, the difficulty you're going to find with that is as soon as you start to lean that handle forward and take loft off, you've got to be mindful that you're going to take bounce off the back of the bottom of the club therefore the club is potentially in a position where it could dig a little bit on you that bounce is there to try and help you as best it can for will he's a skilled player he can practice enough that he can control that so are you worried about this ridge that's kind of halfway up the green here looking at it, i'm probably looking to pitch it just before the ridge okay so you're looking to bounce it short and then up and yeah. over it okay yeah. yeah you've executed that that's in oh how did that not go in, Will? Not sure, it was close. So, 
if you come and have a quick look now over here, if you get yourself set up with, I'm just gonna pop your ball down there. You can see, for that particular shot, you could see how much shaft lean that Will's kind of put into that. And all he's doing is he's taking loft off the club. So even though he's using a nine iron, he's actually turning it into more like a seven iron or even a six iron, depending on how much shaft lean he's putting into it. And like I said before, as soon as he leans that shaft forward, he's gonna take that bounce off the club. Again, Will's a skilled player, he can cope with that, but it's something you need to be aware of when you're playing these types of shots. Right, the next shot we've got for you is, well, it's actually quite a straightforward, or should be quite a straightforward shot. It's got coming from an up position and we're going down onto the green and it's only, how far is this? 15 paces onto the green. So it's not a particularly long shot. Now Will, interestingly, always uses a 62 degree wedge. And I just kind of wanted to talk through why he does that and what you're actually trying to get from it. So same again, I'm more manipulating the loft. So I'll bring it down to a 58 or yeah. a 56. And my idea is to more pitch it just on the green and like to see it roll out. Okay. Instead of the ball checking up. So I like to see the ball roll out and potentially going in. Are you, again, are you picking a landing spot here? Yeah. So or are you getting into that zone again? Yeah, more of a zone. Get? So I'm just looking, so probably a couple of paces on the green, anywhere on the green to a couple of paces on. Okay. So you're not looking to throw this too close and then check it? No. You're trying to release it down Definitely, to the yeah. even though we've got a little bit of green to work with. Yeah, okay. it's yeah, more of a release shot. Okay, let's go with them. Is this handle forward? Forward again. So he's taking loft off the club here again because what he's doing is he's just pushing the handle forward, which again, you've got to be careful with this. Taking bounce off the club, chances are you're going to start to dig the club a little bit. Shot. So I've actually got my 56 degree wedge for this particular shot. Will going for the lob wedge, I'm going for my kind of sand wedge. I've got lots and lots of bounce on the club, so I'm wanting when I'm chipping around the greens with this type of wedge, it's very rare you'll see me get my 60 out. So the one thing that I've got to mention as well about my chipping, and I could have mentioned it over there with the longer shot, but I use a putting grip. So I don't necessarily start to move into a, a normal growth grip for me. I tend to use my putting grip that I would use, let's say, if I was putting. Now, why do I do that? I do that because I'm thinking about chipping as more of a lofted putt. I'm not trying to get too much hinging action going on. I'm trying to keep my wrists and, and hands quite firm through the shot. So by holding it like a putter, it automatically makes me feel like I can just literally use the club like a pendulum from there. I tuck my elbows in nice and tight to my body and then I lean slightly towards the target and then I just execute it like just like a pendulum type of shot here and let the loft of the club do the work to get the ball up. And a bit like Will really, I don't want to see that ball sort of grab and check on me. I actually want the ball to release out. A lot of people are always looking for what they call a little bit of spin from these wedges. I actually feel like I'm going to be more consistent if I can get that ball to land and then just release out towards the hole. Right, we've got a pretty tough shot now. We've got a small shot, so we don't have a lot of green to work with, but we've got to go up and over this bunker. So to make sure we get it over the bunker, we need lots of loft. So for this particular shot, I've pulled out my 56 degree wedge. Again, it's very, very normal that you'd see me using my 56 with plenty of bounce, because I want that club to react into the ground. This is where I start to change my grip position. So I've gone from the chipping grip of what I call my putting grip to now more of an interlock, because what I'm trying to do now, I'm trying to generate a little bit more speed into this shot because the more speed I can get the more I can get the ball to spin and maybe pop up a little bit off the club. For this particular shot by gripping it in this normal way I can really feel like I can almost start to feel the right hand flicking underneath me. I'm trying to get the bounce of the club to work. I don't want to dig the leading edge in here and lean that handle forward. I need to get that club to feel like it's sort of just taking over as it comes through and utilize the sole of the club a little bit more for this shot. So I don't particularly stand too wide on the shot. I just take my normal stance. I keep myself about 50-50 in my weight distribution. I'm not leaning forward or definitely I'm not leaning back. And then I just let the club just slide underneath. I pick my target, which is somewhere between the flag and the bunker and then execute the shot from there.
Right, Will, do you do anything different to that? Yeah, definitely I'd say the, the weight is from chipping to pitching is more 50-50 there. Okay, so would you class this as a pitch? Yeah, I'd say it's more of a pitch, yeah. Okay. I'm still using the same club, the 62, and same as you. I'm not trying to dig as much on this one. Hands so you're, more neutral. Yeah, so you're not going to lean the shaft forward too much. You're looking to elevate that ball up Definitely, quickly. Yeah. And are you ever thinking about the bounce under here? Are you ever thinking about that? Not too much, really. No, more ball first, I'd say. So I'm not really affected by the bounce. It's got quite a low bounce anyway. Yeah, eight, eight bounce, eight bounce 62, so. yeah. So are you a player that tends to get the club to sort of take over like I am? Or are you a player that tends to pull the club, the shaft through? And what I mean by this, are you someone that kind of lets the club kick out underneath with the right hand just feeling like it's taking over? Or are you a player that slides the club through like so? Yeah, slide it through. Okay, yeah. so you're kind of pulling the handle as you come through the shot and keeping the loft on the club. Yeah. I want to feel like I'm more in control of the wedge. I feel if you get a bit flippy, you more get more of the thins and the duffy ones. Uh Oh, really good shot. So not a lot of divot action going on there, so just barely bruising the surface. And the reason for that is that what Will's done is as he's kind of come across, he's he's maintained his shaft lean, so he's not lent it forward too much, and he's just pulled the club kind of across him as he's come through. And with me, what I've done is I feels like I'm right hand scooping on the ball as it comes up through. Again, all we're doing is making sure that we're not delivering too much of that leading edge, and actually we're utilizing as much of the bounce as we possibly can. Just gonna help you with your sort of short game shots. It's gonna stop you from getting those diggy, diggy shots that we see a lot of players doing. Got me, Will. Yep, again. You got me again. Hey. Right, thanks for your time today, Will. Thank you. So that's part two of a series of four that we're going to be doing. We're going to head over to the bunker now, but let us know. Are you working on your short game? Is this an area of your game that you need a little bit of work on? Hopefully those three basic little chip shots can help you with your game. Put your comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking from that particular part of this short game series. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. And as always, we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks for watching.